continuing on, we're going to talk a little bit about substances and mixtures right now. Uh, we see that substances are broken up into the elements and into the compounds. We see that mixtures are broken up into the homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Now, a pure substance um, in every single sample, it has the same characteristic properties. Oops, sorry. Same characteristic properties and the same compositions. Uh, they're made up of one type of atom, which would be an element. So we see that elements are pure substances. And then we see that two or more types of atoms are a compound. So if we have an element, that means we have one type of atom, that's a pure substance, and we talked about elements before. And a compound is two or more types of those atoms chemically bonded together. Remember that chemical is, chemical is something that's brand new. Now, chemicals in the lab are treated as pure. Uh, we realize that all chemicals have some level of impurity, but there are different grades of chemicals, and we use those for different purposes, different types of labs. Now, if we look at this example, we see that in A, we see that we have, we're going to pretend that those dots are atoms. Here we see that we have two red atoms that are bonded together, and they're floating around. And in the same space, we see that there are two blue atoms floating around. In B, we see that we have just all red atoms bonded to each other floating around and nothing else. And then we see in C that we have both blue and red atoms that are bonded together, um, but that's all we have. I don't know why it's doing that, guys. Sorry. Uh, so in A what we see is we have two different types of atoms. They're not bonded together, they're just in the same space. So B, we just have one type of atom, that would be an element. In C, we have two types of atoms, but they're bonded together, so that would be a compound. So A would be a mixture. Now a mixture is a blend of two or more types of matter, and in the mixture, each component keeps its own identity and properties. Uh, the components are only physically mixed together. And we talked about earlier about physical, meaning physical doesn't change. Okay? In a mixture, they're physically mixed, meaning that they can be separated using physical means. Now, properties of a mixture are a combination of the properties of the components uh, that make them up. Now, first type of mixture, we have homogeneous mixture. It's also called a solution. It's very uniform in composition, meaning when you look at it, you only see one thing. You don't see any visible parts um, in the mixture. Examples of this are vinegar, clean air, salt water, brass. And we see that in those examples, if we look at clean air, that's a mixture of gases. But we can't really look at clean air and go, well, there, there's a spot of oxygen, oh, there's a spot of carbon dioxide. We don't see the different types of gases. Now, the other type of mixture is a heterogeneous mixture. Okay, it's not uniform in com composition. There's no visible parts, or uh, there, sorry, there are visible parts. Um, so when we're looking at it, we see all the different um, parts of it. We see, take for instance, up on the very top over here, we see that we have blood, and we have those red blood cells, and then we have white blood cells. We can see the difference between the two things, so we can see the different parts. Um, example over here, we see that we have a cookie, and we see that we have cookie here, and then we have the parts, other parts in it, okay? And then sand and water, or if we take our last example, iced tea, we see the tea, and then there's ice in it. We have granite. And granite is, uh, when we put it on a countertop, you can always see the different uh, flakes in it. And we can see the difference, so we know that it's a heterogeneous mixture. And blood, blood separated into uh, white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. If we look at it through a microscope, we can see those different parts. But if we look at copper 2 sulfate, and when we look at it, we really can't see anything in there. It's blue, but we can't really see anything else, so we know it's a homogeneous mixture. Now, physical, te physical separation techniques that we use, um, we have filtration, which you can see over here, and that's when solid part is trapped by filter paper, and the liquid part runs through the paper, 
when you think of this, think of a Brita water filter. Uh, vaporization is where the liquid portion is evaporated off to leave the solid. Uh, we could boil off the water in salt water and the salt would be left in the container that we boiled it in. Okay, next one we see we have um, to the right we have decanting. And it's when the liquid is poured off after the solid is settled at the bottom. And then we have a centrifuge, which that's a machine you see on the CSI. And it's a machine that spins around a sample very quickly so that components with different densities separate out. Then we have paper chromatography, which we use this um, to separate out, they've done right here, separating out inks. And the lighter particles will move up faster and the heavier particles will stay at the bottom. And lastly, we look at our chart again, coming back to it. And we see that pure substances are broken up into elements and compounds. Remember that to make an element or a couple, two elements into a compound, we have to have a chemical reaction. Okay? Mixtures are physically mixed together, and they're broken in, up into homogeneous, which we can't see the difference, and heterogeneous, which we can see the difference. And we see that those can be separated using physical separations because they were only physically mixed.